let's get some price picks in today guys nba is gone for a week but i do have some esports picks tonight before that let's just get into a recap of last night's picks i gave out two six flexes this was one of them as i said grant and simons was kind of off the board or got bumped by the time i started the video so i said to replace with jared jackson jr on the over six and a half points he did not play and then there was also tyler Toffoli. this pick i told you guys to replace him with that one cashed so you should have got a three out of five on this slip if you took the rest the same, so Draymond, Clay, Brooke Lopez, and Giannis. So 3 out of 5 there if you took that exact slip. And this was the other slip, one, 3 and 3. Kaminga did not get his PRE. And then this Chris Kreider and Zibanejad here ended up going in the opposite direction. The Rangers did very well, so they both went over. There was also that one last pick on Draymond Green under 7 assists. If you guys took him in either of these entries, that one also cashed. Some of the actual picks that were available when I was filming the videos, like the Draymond Green under assists and the Tyler Toffoli over points, it was a 7 and 5 day. So not bad, but we didn't make any money. We got into work today and I already have these slips sort of built out. It's going to be some esports. And in esports, there actually is correlation. I want to go over the correlation in CS2 and Valorant today. So, I mean, these games are played pretty much similarly. Valorant's kind of like a clone of CS2. So, they have very similar rules, very similar game flow scripts and all that. So, it's pretty much the exact same correlation between both the sports. And when you're looking at these sports, they're both round based games that do have overtime. So, if it is a tight game, that game is more likely to go to overtime. So you do want to take overs in games like that. But there's also the chance that there's blowouts. In CS2, the way it works is first 13 rounds wins. So you could have a game that some team wins 13 rounds and the other team only wins two rounds. That means there's going to be less headshots or less kills. So if you're expecting a blowout, you know, a 13-2 game, something like that, there's going to be less rounds, which means less kills within those rounds. The minimum amount of rounds is 13 if the team works a 13-0 sweep. And the maximum is kind of unlimited. Overtimes could go into like double OT, triple OT, kind of like in the NBA. Obviously, it's less likely for that to happen. So that's why overs in CS2 are pretty good, especially in the same game. So you see here, I have one team, Flamengo versus Galleries. These guys are in this exact same game. So if this guy is likely to go over, this guy is also more likely to go over. Because if it is an overtime, they're going to both be getting a lot more kills and a lot more headshots. Same exact concept here with Bestia versus Case. These guys are in the same game, especially if there's a lot of rounds, maybe even overtime. This is going to be more likely to get more kills. Then in Valorant, same case here. I might be R versus Cloud9. You could actually see that Cloud9 is a minus 500 favorite. So if there's less rounds, if Cloud9 is absolutely blowing out MIBR, it is more likely that these guys are both going to go under again. Even if Cloud9 is a team that's doing really well, their kills are already adjusted to be higher than the other team because they're the better team. Or am I taking these specific players instead of just grabbing anyone from these teams? Well, I like to find the ones that are the absolute best value. And the way I find that is just by comparing to underdogs lines or any other sports books that may have CS2 or Valorant or League of Legends props. So for example, Arson over here, we get him at 30 to 1 price picks. On underdog, he said at 31. So I already know we're getting a kill of value, at least on underdog. It's not to say that that's the perfect line for him. We don't know who's right or who's wrong. But instead of grabbing him at 31 underdog, we might as well grab him at 32. So we're getting some value there. Now, since I'm going under on MIBR, I want to be taking the under on their opponent called 9. And I did check some of these players here. So like Whippy, for example, he's at 30 and a half on price picks. On underdog, he's actually at 31 and a half. He's a kill lower on price picks, which means we definitely don't want to take him on the under here because we could go on underdog and take him at the under 31 and a half. Now, I did check the rest of them and they're pretty much similar concept. They're too low on price picks compared to underdog it's oxy and jake here that are kind of basically the exact same line on price picks and underdog so i put oxy on the under 37 and a half kills because i know at least we're not losing value it's pretty much equal value on both price picks and underdog so i grabbed these two guys here now for the cs2 guys pretty much the exact same concept if i grab this guy and throw him on underdog he said at 15 and a half headshots we're getting about 14 so this is a lot of value we're getting here 14.0 we're getting one and a half extra headshots on price picks if we're taking us over that's why we took the over there and i said let's go get another guy from the other team so hap here is set at 11 on price picks he said at 12 and a half on underdog so one and a half kills on both these guys so just go and grab random players from these teams you might not get that much value you want to be capturing as many kills as possible so for this game here we're actually capturing three headshots of value which is actually much better than capturing just kills because not every kill is going to be a headshot so amazing value on that on both the overs then on this guy here he said at 10 and a half headshots on underdog we're getting him at nine another one and a half headshots of value which is amazing the other guy from case from the same game we're getting him at 16.0. He's 17 and a half on our dog. So we're capturing basically six headshots of value across these guys. We're getting less value on Valorant, but a ton of value on these four picks. So as I was locking this in, I forgot I already played my five slips for today, my $25 worth due to my limits. So this is definitely an official play. I'm, I'm going to be still playing it, sending it to the Discord and having someone else send the link. But this is going to be an amazing correlated esports play. And if you guys are interested in getting esports plays and just general NHL, any other sports, CBB, I also have CBB plays for the week on this NBA All-Star break. Make sure to join the Discord and we're going to be cashing out for this week, even on the slow season.